The Story of a Lesson, Lesson Study at Branson, 2012. What do teachers know about teaching and how do they come to know it? These are the fundamental questions that underlie lesson study work at Branson. For three years, lesson study groups at Branson have embraced the challenge of working interdepartmentally to study a lesson within a single subject area. One of last year's teams included Allison Seal from Fine Art, Angela Alonzo from Language, Tim Danner from English, Eric Oldmixon from Fine Art, and Livingston Miller from English. In its initial meetings, the group developed two overarching questions. One, how can students revel in a new subject, poetry? Two, how can teachers employ an interdisciplinary approach to help the transition to new areas of study within a course? Or how might interdisciplinary activities help students access new material and concepts? In Tim Danner's F and G Block English 1 classes, the team found the lesson that suited its aims and questions. At the end of a three-week unit in March on sonnet reading and writing, the ninth graders would be writing an ekphrastic sonnet, a sonnet about a work of art. With a target lesson in mind, the group developed more specific understanding and affective goals. Their goals address one of the new Common Core standards for ninth and tenth graders. This makes me feel a little melancholy. A grand old warship being ignominiously hauled away for scrap. <laughs> the inevitability of time, don't you think? What do you see? A bloody big ship. Excuse me. Many of you know me, and a few of you we perhaps haven't met. Um, I don't know how much Mr. Danner told you about today, but it's perhaps a little different than you might be used to in a couple of different ways. So what has Shelley accomplished with this poem? Again, is, the, is my language too oblique? Well, he's mirrored this fact that maybe, because he's from 1818, we're reading it now, that he only says I once, we don't know anything about him, and we don't know about anything about Shelley himself. We don't know him, we don't know right, except, except what we can sort of discern from the tone of this poem. He's left it not too obvious way to figure it out. And how is this maybe different from, or the same, um, from what else you've looked at? Right? This is your third week of poetry, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of Sonnet 55 by Shakespeare, how he talks about not marble, not marble, nor the gilded monuments and princes shall outlive this powerful line. That reminds me of one. Same kind of theme. Jonathan? Um, yeah, I agree with Jordan that it's it's like that, but in in that sign, um, in that poem, it Shakespeare is sort of he doesn't say I, but he at least isn't. He's at least talking as himself and not just describing what a traveler told him. Like, it's more direct, I guess. What are you raising your hand? Uh, yeah, I was going to say they all, um, maybe it's a sonnet thing, but they're all describing it through time. They're all describing different ways they feel, but using time. I'm not sure I totally understand what you mean. Could you explain He's maybe, it? say we're right about him, he doesn't like uh, one head of state. He's just, they're all using this metaphor of time to get at different messages they're passing across. Okay. Right, but we don't have that in the in the term. Like I, no, I think I what I'm seeing is our, our questions is that we actually want to be asking the same the questions same series for both, both set and merging. Yeah. I think it must be a single term or set of terms to apply to both, right? 
For freshmen, what's the best? Is it going to be what values are revealed? What attitudes, judgments, perspective, right? I mean, um, just what do we reveal? I think it's too broad, but if we can say something about what message is the author or poet or painter trying to send, I mean, what if we work like nesting dolls and we go yeah. from what's the, what's Ozymandias's feeling? Mm -hmm. What's the traveler's feeling? What's the speaker's feeling? What's the reader's feeling? What's the poet's feeling? Or something like that. Mm -hmm. Don't get out to get out to Shelley um, because it, you're right; it's complicated. And that's I think that's part of the, their issue with the question. If we want to get them to understand the question, like what is revealed about Shelley, the, the Turner thing should be more focused on getting them to to say make statements about it, like um, sort of their own values based on how they respond. Well, because they're being Shelley. Yeah, that's kids, what I'm saying. I think that's yeah, the is that the kids are Their Shelley. homework is to be Shelley. So it's not what is revealed about Shelley. It's actually not even a question we're going to even ask it correctly. It is, can you not see that something is being revealed about the poet's point of view? I mean, we, could, yeah. we could have, like, turn on this side of the way. Allison had it worked here, and then, you know... Mmm! Ramsey. Right. And then keep them up next to each other. And then you have the two worlds over there too, so then you have this kind of dynamic of seeing three emotional reactions, three emotional reactions, three and three, and seeing what the difference is. At least they can kind of visually see that this is what we've asked them to do, that it's a and then system. This right. actually becomes, or at least this, to, to keep this up here, it seems to me like the, our objectives for changing the lesson are to unify the questions so we're asking similar things so that there's more of a parallel between how we talk about the Turner, or Turner and how we talk about Ozymandias. And so as you look at a painting and you see a white boat and you see a ghostly boat, like, all right, suddenly this is really intriguing here. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? And get them just to talk about it a little right. bit, like Kate was saying. And then we can look at the other, boat, the other words on the board really quickly. Mm -hmm. But then when we start to repeat that process, I mean, that, I mean that's going to become, that's the goal. But we figured that if they didn't totally understand the poem by the end of this day, that would be okay. Mm -hmm. As long as they understood or gained more insight into what it was to write about an object right. outside. Could it be which of the boat is the hero? And that could be easy. Is that compl is that good? I think because you guys they have don't hear very well. Right. So which of the boat, which of these boats is the hero? Well then what, what if you ask, uh, is Ozymandias the hero of the poem or not? Ooh. My problem with the drawings, they, they had a great interpretation of it and they, they were spot on about why this was correct and why this wasn't, mm -hmm. why Statue of Liberty is actually kind of accurate. But in terms of our overarching le lesson ideas, we hadn't discussed the poem yet at all. Right. So in fact, they were in no better position to discuss to the drawings discuss than when they had drawn them, just that the good kids who got it earlier were the ones giving the answers about yeah. the drawings, right? And so. And my other question would be, I think that's the moment that I had a really hard time getting them to come back. Why don't we move it to the end? When we get these moments of a kid who really sees the poem, asking everybody to go find that in the text. The, uh, it's sort of like those AP, Things yeah, you yeah, me, yeah. It's like you give the kids a thesis and then right. you say, how, did you, how do you get from the text to this sort of thesis? And then after they do it once, if it's set up to them like that, maybe they'll then be able to like... Find, the, find, find it for themselves. Find it for themselves. And just like we just saw, you know, in both of these, you guys are coming from language that's showing a bit of your own personal spin on this. Shelley did the same thing in writing his poem. You guys did it in the same thing, or drew in your little drawings. Let's look at those, right? You have two minutes, you know, which drawing you fix your, most accurately your sense of the poem and why. And now we can start to, you know, find textual matches for that. And then at the end, you know, that should get That's us to the, the same. That's the question. That's it, Eric. Justifying the drawing with the text. And yeah. not, the per not, the person, not, the person, not the person who made the drawing, but the, the, their choice. Like, I think this drawing best represents the text, and I can justify my claim, me and my partner. We can justify our claim because we notice these lines.
There is an open crooked desk up here, if any of you guys back there. <laughs> I want you to look up here for a second, decide which of these examples you think to be the best representation, the most accurate, the best. How do you choose the best? Is it the most accurate representation or the most complete representation? And then why? And so to come up with why, I want you to work with your neighbor here, look at the poem, you have two minutes, find me some evidence in the poem. Make sense? Time is up. Which group has a decisive decision and a couple of supporting answers? Which pair? All right. Um, so we went with the middle one. The middle one. We'll go ahead and we'll tally there. We picked that one because, first of all, <laughs> you gotta warn people to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, got the two vast and trunkless legs of stone that stand in the desert. Okay. And um, all the green ones are shot. All the systems all messed up. Oh no, broken. Broken. Aha! All right. So this is a green guy? And yeah. then um, it's a half sunk, a shattered visage lies. Visage. Okay. And then, um, so the head's half sunk. Great. That's what separated that one from the bottom right. So you're trying to decide which one like works better with the palm. Uh -huh. Because the bottom right one doesn't really, like there's just, that's just one thing that the middle one has that the bottom right doesn't show. Okay. Now. So you want to pick a different one? Well, can I go, like, go off that? Go off that. All right, go for it. Um, you chose the same one? I don't know. If you had to be put on the spot, which one did you choose? The one in the middle. Okay. Because um, it says that... Like, you did it? Is that yours? No. Ah, oh, see, our teacher trying to pick out styles <laughs> of drawing here. Okay, um, go ahead. I wish it was mine, but... Okay, uh, it says, um, sneer of cold command and wrinkled lip. And the one in the middle, like the face of the statue looks like angry and like powerful kind of, like cold command, which like goes off that. But then Johnny points out to me, like it says at the bottom, the lone level stand stretched far away, and the one in the middle doesn't have like level stand. Oh, so you're doing a counter argument in there, so I will not underline that as being similar to that. Okay, lone and level stands, not so lone and level. So, who chose a different uh, work and why? Yes? Uh, which is the bottom right one? The bottom right one. Uh, we will choose black. Okay. And why? Um, what's well, kind of what Zoe said, it's the one that most clearly depicts like the lack of anything else other than the statue. The lack of anything else is Not where? At the bottom. The no nothing, new level? Uh, nothing beside remains. Uh, it's like the third line. Yeah. Nothing beside remains. Okay, good. Anything else? Um, no, I mean, that just seems to be like one of the most important things that's in the poem, like the lack of anything. Cool. What then do teachers know about teaching and how do they come to know it? Lesson studies suggest that teachers can develop teaching knowledge by engaging with colleagues in the design, implementation, and scrutiny of a single lesson by teacher talk, by experimentation and observation, by collaboration and reflection. Lesson study further emphasizes that the focus of these activities be student learning.